Joining me now is Jarek Johnson, the president and CEO of the NAACP, and Stephanie Young, the executive director of When We All Vote, a nonpartisan voting initiative formed by Michelle Obama in 2018. Uh, Derek Johnson, first to you. Some voting rights groups in Georgia say that President Biden shouldn't come unless he has a concrete plan to get voting rights passed. That means dealing with Joe Manchin. But from all of our reporting on the Hill, there is no such plan. There's no way to get it passed. So is this a lot of messaging from the White House to say, I'm with you, without having a way to get it done? Well, for the groups on the ground, it speaks to the frustration that we all have. This administration is approaching a year in office. Uh, the president said he was going to stand with the black community. There is no more important issue than protection of voting rights and doing away with political gerrymandering. And here we are a year later approaching the midterm election and we still lack protection. So no matter what they say tomorrow, it would all depend on what they do when they leave the podium to ensure we have voting right protection. Well, though, the, re the recent push by the president doesn't have to be accompanied by a legislative strategy. It is all in the Senate's hand. It is for the Senate to do their job. But we have a president that have more senatorial experience than any other president other than Lyndon Baines Johnson. He is considered one of the masters of the Senate. So we're not saying how he should do his job. We're saying get it done. And we need it done before the end of this month. In fact, we needed, we needed it done before the end of the year as legislative bodies are drawing maps now. And political uh, gerrymandering is a, a is a trope for racial gerrymandering in far too many states across the South. Let's talk, Stephanie, about what your group could do. You had a, a full-page ad in the New York Times yesterday titled Fight for Our Vote. Michelle Obama signed that. That's her initiative. Uh, are you concerned that the White House might now accept less than that? Maybe what possibly might be proposed by the Republicans on the Electoral College reform? Well, the Electoral College reform piece, that's a complete distraction, and it's also an attempt to legitimize uh, the big lie that the 2020 election was not uh, legitimate, and we're not going to take that distraction uh, for an answer. What we did yesterday in the New York Times and Mr. Johnson and the NAACP also signed on, uh, it was a pledge. It was to talk about what we're going to do, um, and that means we're going to uh, recruit and train at least 100,000 volunteers. We're going to register uh, at least a million voters. We're going to organize 100,000 people to call their senators and tell them that they believe in filibuster reform and to support the Voting Rights Act, the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, and the For the People Act. Um, so we're not going to be distracted uh, by, by the proposal that uh, folks have put out there uh, that is uh, meant to take us off course, uh, because we know that we cannot out-organize voter suppression. Uh, Congress is going to have to act. The Senate is going to have to act. Um, and what I'm confident is, is that uh, groups like ours and the NAACP and others who have joined and band together were willing to do the work uh, to get the people uh, fired up as much as we can uh, to push the Senate to do the right thing. But, but we do need uh, the White House to act. And I do think it is at least uh, encouraging that we're talking about it a little bit more, especially rules uh, reform. Can we talk, uh, Jared Johnson, about the NAACP's lawsuit uh, against former President Trump, the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, Rudy Giuliani. Sure. I mean, we have our first hearing today. Uh, we filed the lawsuit because of the violation of the what's called considered the Ku Klux Klan Act. Uh, we see the January 6th as an insurrection or the attempt to coup. No, but we also see the lack of voting rights protection uh, uh, continuation of that coup when you consider the 19 states that have adopted laws to subvert democracy, to suppress the vote. And in fact, even when the will of voters are to be clearly ascertained, in several of those states, they gave power to legislative bodies to go and change the decision. That's not a democracy. We cannot send troops abroad to fight for the, a democracy that we're not willing to protect and stand up for here domestically. Derek Johnson, Stephanie Young, thank you very much.